Back with us here on Halftime Report, on to the management of Bata then, when Mangalam spoke to MD and CEO Gunjan Shah to discuss their Q2 numbers and the road ahead. It's been a tough period from a consumption point of view. And within that also, there's been a very markedly post-COVID uh, K-shaped effect in terms of the lower price points being under pressure. And I have commented on this in the past. Uh, we are hopeful at some point in time it does, stagger, it does cycle out. Uh, I think the primary reason for that has been that the the middle and the belly of the consumers, etc., have been undergoing pressure from an inflation point of view that they saw post-COVID. And we are we are hoping that some of our actions that we are doing, and we are doing a bunch of things, and we see some early signs of green shoots on that, and which is what you commented on, right? Uh, which is to make sure that we are able to bring about uh, you know, great products across at great price points. A classic example is the recently launched Karthik Aryan campaign with the artisanal leather collection starting at pure leather products starting at 2499. I think it's seen great initial response and we are looking forward to that plus some of the other cyclical kick-ins, uh, the wedding season, etc., which will be a pretty prolonged one, long awaited after a long time. But so let's... You know, at the halfway mark of this year, we are looking at flat revenue growth compared to the same half last year. The second half of this year, what's the visibility that you have on growth? Are we looking at low single digits? Are we aspiring for high single digits? Or double digits would be out of question? Our medium term ambition has been and will remain basically in the range of about double digits, right? Uh, so we will stay with that ambition. Uh, we'll have to see how it pans out in the near term. And that I would refrain from giving a forecast, but we are pretty optimistic seeing how the trends had been in the quarter that went by between July to September. So September was much better than what we saw in July. So hopefully that should augur well for us in H2. Premium products, you said they've done well and their contribution to your overall sales have also increased. Where does it stand at right now? What was the growth delta in your premium products versus the overall average growth of the company? So, uh, I think it would be at least about 3x, right? So, the premium products would have grown in significantly high uh, single digits overall, right? Within that, the couple of the few brands that I mentioned grew in double digits. So, uh, we are also fueling it by obviously a lot of actions from our side. Uh, last quarter, we saw, in fact, uh, now for the last four quarters, we saw the largest expansion of the Hush Puppy network. Now, it stands at almost about 140 stores, EBOs. Uh, we are looking at it very aggressively going forward. Uh, similarly, we also opened uh, 15 kiosks now in the last about uh, eight months in floats. That has given us great response. And also our Power EBO, which is our athleisure brand that we mm -hmm. want to check going forward. That has also seen now four uh, stores cumulatively opened in the last two quarters. So that's also fueling it along with obviously... Uh, you know, campaigns like we've got this full campaign that we ran with Hush Puppies right. with peanut collection. And that's given us a great response from consumers, etc. So I think all those actions plus the consumer tendency towards premiumization is helping a lot. We've seen uh, no impact of that on the margins yet because margins over the last three years have only come down. Where do you think they settle? So there are two parts to this. I think uh, one is at cross margins level. I am reasonably comfortable actually at where we are. Last quarter was a little lower from what I would have desired. But overall, from a medium term trajectory, I think our cross margins have been actually pretty stable. Uh, and I don't foresee too much of variations going forward. Uh, on, an, on a on an EBITDA level, I think last quarter we actually leveraged our operational efficiencies reasonably well, despite the sluggishness in overall demand. And once we see demand coming through, those leverages should come through. We will obviously want to be even more tighter on our cost efficiencies. There are a bunch of actions that are following through on that front. Uh, so I think both of these combined is where my margin commentary would remain. So gross margins, pretty comfortable, uh, and we should see stability going forward. Uh, operating leverage should aid the net margins at EBITDA level. You know, one of the biggest uh, issues one sees as uh, an analyst for Bata have to do more with the brand identity rather than the business of it all. Because while you're transforming, moving up is a little difficult as against moving lower when, you know, an expensive brand selling cheaper products makes it a lot easier than a, a value brand selling premium products. The risk that one has is that at higher price points, the competition is fairly high. And uh, at lower pr price points, the demand environment right now is not very conducive. So how do you manage this identity issue uh, while Bata is in this transformation process? 
No, great question, Mangalam. And I'll give you an example that tells us how to straddle this entire, uh, you know, how do you say duality? Uh, you know, the great example is, let's say, a product like Floats that we have launched in the last about three years, right? It's now become the fastest 200 crores in our portfolio. It's most probably at a run rate uh, ARR of almost about 150 crores. And every quarter, we seem to have sequential growths like a startup. Now, overall, it's a great premiumization drive. But however, uh, consumers see it as great value proposition. So you can straddle both. You don't need to do only one or the other. Uh, another very, very different example would be, let's say, for example, what we are trying to do with uh, Ash Puppies and now with Power, which is to try and get basically technology leverage going and see whether we are able to leverage that technology to demand the premium that we want from consumers. So uh, you can straddle both but you've got to provide value to consumers either ways, right? And our, our secret is to make sure that we've got technology as well as styling to go with it. And I guess you also have to have different brand names for the same as well, because Floats, Hush Puppies, all of them are separate brand names which don't uh, attach a certain perception with, uh, uh, you know, the existing perception that there is on a brand. I'm, I'm Something similar that happened was with Maruti. When they wanted to sell premium cars, their distribution chain uh, moved to a different showroom, which was Nexa. Wonder if you're doing something like that for Bata as well, a different store name, a store identity for you to be able to sell premium products. Is that on the cards? Actually, we see synergies both ways, Mangalam, right? So floats is, even in the kiosk that we've launched, floats is floats by Bata, right? So there is an endorsement. There is huge awareness as well as trust that consumers have with the Bata brand. Right. How do you make sure that you are able to provide, uh, as I said, straddle both premiumization, infuse technology and provide affordability, I think is the secret that we would like to straddle going forward. Doesn't take away from the fact that some of the initiatives that we have done, as I mentioned, the banners that we've got of Hush Puppies and now the nascent banners that we have initiated in the last year for floats as well as uh, power are also a trajectory towards tackling certain use occasions from consumers and therefore the role that the brands play in it. Final question. Last three years, your revenue CAGR has been just about 3%. Um, even if you, you know, look at the post-COVID disruptions, etc., that again is a lot lower than all the other competitors in the market, at least in the listed space, which have reported their numbers. Where do you foresee this growth uh, trajectory in the very near future? And the medium-term targets that you've given how long before you get to that double digit growth actually there is a there is a you know so within this price points above basically let's say 1000 have seen actually a double digit cagr so it's been the lower price points that have been under pressure from a revenue cagr perspective we hope that that will also turn around with some of our initiatives that we have mentioned as well as obviously the consumer sentiment turning around on that front but in the medium term we want to look at a double digit growth for sure